Suspensions on Amazon are an inevitable part of your selling journey while selling on Amazon. My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. This is the My Amazon Guy podcast. Today we'll be talking about how to avoid the most common pitfalls in suspensions. Today's podcast is sponsored by Alpha Raven House, a new smarter way to get verified reviews while getting ranked on Amazon. Check them out at alpharavenhouse.com. So suspensions, uh, if you get warned two times for any action whatsoever, I almost guarantee that that third warning is going to come with a suspension. It doesn't matter what the subject is. So if you're getting performance notifications and you get that third warning, I, uh, you're going to get suspended. So just be on the lookout for those and take them seriously. If you get a second performance notification for the same problem in a 90 day time frame, that suspension is right around the corner. So today I'm going to talk about some very common uh, suspension reasons and what you can do to avoid those. Um, and and what's interesting is that the the top uh, suspension reasons are kind of they're kind of evolving in the year 2020 right now. Uh, right now, I would say, you know, last week I dealt with a suspension for inauthentic item claims. And uh, we don't know if it was the customer that reported the seller or if it was the uh, manufacturer. It was one of the two. It could have been either one or potentially both. Uh, but a relatively new seller had their account suspended despite them having a 12-year relationship with their manufacturer and had all the rights and invoicing to sell their products. They got reported and taken down with no... Uh, no notice ahead of time for selling inauthentic items, even though they were 100% authentic. So it goes to show that Amazon's policy right now is very much shoot to kill, then ask questions. And it's very nerve wracking, very frustrating, and, and can be damaging to your health. Suffice it to say, when a suspension occurs, I pretty much guarantee your account will be suspended at least uh, once every three years for a short time period, seemingly. And it's, it's because Amazon's policies are vague. And, and even when they're not vague, they are enforced with a frenzy, even with the appearance of infraction, not even with the infraction. And uh, what, what an inauthentic item claim is really is they're saying, hey, this is... This is a knockoff. This isn't the right item that I ordered, right? Uh, I wanted this bottle opener that had a, a black edge on it, and it came and it was red. They would call that inauthentic. Or, hey, this was supposed to be by XYZ brand, but I, I got the Zebra brand or whatever. And so that can, that can cause uh, problems with that. So if you own your own brand registry, the chances of you getting inauthentic item claims is next to none. So that's, that's the number one way you can protect yourself against inauthentic claims. But if you're a retailer who buys from a wholesaler or buys from a manufacturer, I would say your proactive measure would be to grab uh, uh, a letterhead document with permission to sell their items. And get that before you're suspended. Get that now. Go ask for it ahead of time and buddy up with your with your manufacturer and say, hey, I, I just want to have this in my back pocket. So just in case anything happens, I can send this into Amazon on, and, uh, you know, we won't have any problems. Um, so that's what I would do with inauthentic uh, claims. The second one that I've seen a big pickup on of late is review manipulation. Uh, there's a two-year history to reviews uh, that I'll just kind of summarize, which is a couple years back, they got rid of the ability to uh, incentivize reviews. And since then, Amazon has been on this war path to control the review process. And sellers have been on this alternative war path to game the system and generate as many reviews as possible because reviews lead to additional sales or so we believe, right? More reviews than the other guy, more reviews than the competition, your conversion rate should be higher, should convert better, therefore should go chase reviews. Well, Amazon has been on a frenzy to delete gamified 
uh, incentivized reviews. They now have uh, Amazon sponsor programs for early reviewer program for your first five reviews, Vine program for your first 30. By the way, Vine is currently paused. Probably come back in July if I had to guess. And uh, your email systems to send emails to consumers to request a review. Also, uh, shortly going to be on the Knicks in my prediction. I bet you in 2020, at some point, we will see your ability to communicate with customers to go away almost entirely. I, I bet there will be just a very couple of fringe use cases uh, with questions and responses to customers on where your item is, stuff like that. But uh, most likely you're going to lose your marketing capacity. And the reason I predict that is because Amazon came out with the request a review button. And uh, I think that is going to take the place of it. Uh, in any case, they, a couple years back, they gave uh, sellers or buyers rather the ability to opt out of receiving seller emails. And nowadays they're, they've got that review button Instead of sending emails, they want you to click that. And uh, uh, that's why I think we're going to see that go away. But review manipulation, I've, I've actually covered a few different stories about how sellers were putting um, product inserts to request reviews, incentivize reviews even, or sending letters with, hey, here, get a $10 gift card if you post a review and send us your screenshot or whatever it might be. All of that is prohibited. In fact, I, uh, I got one in the mail one day. And I went ahead and reported it to Amazon. I just wanted to see what they would do about it. And they gave me a $10 credit. So if you see someone cheating and breaking the rules and you report them, Amazon might even reward you. So that's how I know review manipulation right now is a hot topic and Amazon's cracking down on it. Even people who have uh, not gone black hat but are just sending generic review requests by email have gotten warnings about review manipulation. Anybody participating in the... Uh, product giveaway programs right now, Viral Launch uh, being one of them and many, many others out there have also struggled to deal with these questions because uh, they have uh, uh, basically those customers are on lists and Amazon can see the data and they've made correlations algorithmically and they're sending cease and desist to uh, sellers. I actually dealt with a, um, a listing reinstatement issue uh, just the other day for, for a client who had given away 300 products and they took down his listing for re review manipulation. And and he was just doing a, a product launch giveaway, wasn't trying to get reviews per se, but the, he still got uh, his listing taken down. Um, we have done so many listing reinstatements in the last 30 days that we actually started a new service for listing reinstatements. You just go over to myamazonguy.com and go to our service section. You can see listing reinstatements. We can get practically any ASIN reinstated for 500 bucks. Um, obviously, there's a couple couple exceptions to that. If, if you're selling CBD or any banned substance, we can't, can't fix that. But if you're um, following the rules and you just got caught up for one reason or another, algorithm came in and wiped you out, definitely contact us and we can take care of your listing reinstatement needs. A uh, variety of different listing reinstatements that we've dealt with in the past month. Um, everything from uh, trademark infringement, which is also a common suspension reason. We'll cover that next. Uh, but if you you know don't have the words FDA in your listing right now, it will lead to a listing uh, yank. So listing yanks is actually the official Amazon language that seller support uses. Uh, I, I kind of like the word nuke personally. I, I, I use that internally for the last couple of years. But once I started seeing seller support re reference them as Yanks, we've we kind of adopted that language here at my Amazon guy, uh, because it's good to it's good to have the same lingo that seller support uses, because then you get your uh, get your request handled better and dealt with uh, to a favorable outcome. So uh, listing Yanks that we've seen, uh, you know, having FDA language, having a prohibited medical claim, very very hot topic due to COVID. You want to be very careful. If you're selling anything in the health and household category right now, you should do a thorough, deep cleanse and review of all of your listings and avoid any potential uh, medical claims that can be taken out of context, right? Don't say you cure cancer. Don't say you do anything that's not generic. Uh, let the product speak for itself. Don't make medical claims is kind of what I'd recommend. Uh, we've seen listing yanks because of 
uh, just just uh, cu customer complaints or buyer complaints. Um, but trademark infringements, medical claims are typically the most common. Um, and, and if you get um, a trademark infringement claim against your account, Amazon could suspend you on the first one. I've never seen that personally, but I've read online that it's happened to some people. Uh, and if you're going to report somebody else for trademark infringement, just be very careful uh, because you could get into a legal battle. We, we had an account that we did some trademark infringement requests at the request of the client. And uh, they uh, then got into some dialogue with one of the retailers that was selling the product. And they were sourcing the product in a shady, shady way. And I think it was right to file that trademark infringement. But uh, due to potential legal risk, uh, we ended up retracting the claim. Uh, and uh, if you file trademark infringements, just be prepared for legal implications, especially because it can hurt their account. Um, and you can retract those claims, but uh, still, still kind of a shaky ground uh, to be on. So we tend to not file trademark infringements very frequently. We only do it for really, really bad actors, uh, typically. And uh, otherwise, it can it can lead to uh, you know challenges dealing with some of the fallout from that. So uh, trademark infringement, though, there's so many different words and trademarks that could exist. It's impossible to know if you're infringing all the time, right? Like you can't look up every word on your page. But uh, what I would say is, you know, if you're selling, if you're selling something that's compatible with another product, right? You got a table that's compatible with Legos. Make sure you use the phrase "compatible with," and then that way you can avoid any trademark um, concerns. We've we've gotten uh, accounts or products fixed by by using that "compatible with" language. Uh, the next hot topic that I've seen of late in the last 30 days is misuse of variations. This has actually affected a lot of our accounts, and Amazon's changed its policy on parentage. It used to be a wild, wild west. You could parent anything you wanted. Nowadays, though, um, the safest two variation types are color and size. If you're selling a t-shirt and you got red and blue, that's fine. You got small, medium, large of a particular product, that's good. But if you're selling a different shaped item and you're, com and you're parenting those, proceed with caution. I have seen Amazon break those parentages with vigor of late. And then on your, and, and by the way, let's say you got 20 child listings connected through one parentage. They hit you with 20 infractions, not just one, 20 infractions on your account. I think that's uh, silly on Amazon's part. I think it should be just be like one infraction, but whatever. Uh, and that one worries me a lot. I actually uh, think that that's one that's going to uh, come to bite a lot of good sellers unexpectedly. I think that's probably the, the most unexpected suspension risk right now is probably misuse of variations. Um, <clears throat> I've also, you know, yesterday I covered a video about uh, suppressions on listings. I had uh, the word gift in some titles and they suppressed my listings. So the word gift is now prohibited. And in that video, I cover how uh, they don't even have that in their official policy. The word gift is not in the title policy. I read it cover to cover, not there. So even if you're trying to follow the rules and you read the rules for suspensions, suppressions, or uh, you know listing yanks and whatever else, you're not going to be able to prevent this. It's going to happen to you because even the policies on the books they don't document everything that Amazon's going after sellers for right now. It's it's not fair, it's not transparent, but it's not and it's not logical, but that is the current state of affairs with Amazon and I have been through so many conversations with clients where I say stop with the logic, just let's fix the problem and fight about it later, right? And quite frankly, it's good marriage advice, right? Let's fix the problem and then fight about it. You, lo you left your phone at the grocery store? Cool, go get it, right? I'm not going to yell at you for, for leaving your phone there. Just go solve the problem. Go get it. Uh, I might be speaking from some personal history on this one. Uh, not going to lie. But, uh, <laughs> but, but in any case, same thing goes with the Amazon. You got a problem? Just fix it. Uh, get on the phone with seller support. Yeah, it sucks. It's going to take you a couple hours. You're going to go file a dozen tickets, whatever it takes. Hire that consultant. Pay that Pay that hefty fee to get the problem resolved, 500 bucks, whatever it might be. Uh, but it could be your livelihood at stake. Just, just solve the problem. 
doesn't matter why you are in your current situation, just go solve it. All right, so we got listing yanks. If you got a lot of listings getting yanked, it's because of trademark infringement, you know, review manipulation, misuse of variations, inauthentic product claims, whatever it might be. Listing yanks uh, can, can stack up and they could suspend you for that. Um, <clears throat> lastly, the, the other ones I'm gonna mention today are a lot more common, um, historically speaking, and I, I haven't seen an influx of these by any stretch. These are just kind of long-standing ones, but duplicate accounts, if, if you didn't ask for permission to have that second account before you opened it, I would, I would ask for permission now uh, before you get into that risk territory. Unique banking, unique credit card, unique uh, tax ID, business structure, very much needed for multiple accounts. If you're selling the same item on two different accounts, that's a no-no. That could lead to suspension as well. A very common mishandling of duplicate accounts is when you open up a, a, a North American account under one email and you accidentally open up a European account under a second email address. That is a duplicate account as far as the book concerns of policy at Amazon. You need to use the same email address if you're going to do uh, multiple uh, international markets to avoid that problem or have different tax infrastructure. Uh, selling prohibited items, um, you know, I would say that, uh, you know, if you're selling something that is CBD or or against policy, you're selling live ammunition, ammo, or what, you know, something weird on Amazon, you're gonna you're gonna get suspended for selling prohibited items. They'll, usually, they'll take the listings down before they suspend an account. But if you don't have enough long-standing track record, they'll suspend the account too. Uh, negative feedback. I don't think I've personally seen a suspension for negative feedback, but I'm sure it definitely happens. I see that online. Uh, if your feedback score gets below 60, 70%, yeah, you're probably going to be in a little trouble zone. Uh, and then lastly, late shipments. Usually the suspension I see on late shipments is related to just a suspension on merchant fulfilled or drop ship uh, suspension, if you will. They won't suspend FBA and then you have to put together an action plan to solve all these. And, and action plans are wildly misunderstood by sellers. Um, there's usually three bullet points you need to address. You know, what was the problem? How did you solve it? What are you going to do to prevent this from happening again? And then you just, you just admit the problem and tell them how you fixed it and tell them how you, you're going to prevent it from happening again. We, so, uh, you know, we had a problem with this product and c customers thought it could be used a certain way. We added some additional content to our page to ed educate those consumers. And we educated our staff to handle customer service uh, in a certain way so this problem doesn't happen again, right? That's the kind of uh, action plan. Very simplistic, straight to the point, and how to answer it. Um, make sure any any responses to suspensions, If so if you're listening to this and you have been suspended, uh, your first two responses are very, very important. Uh, if you go to if you go to response three, it's gonna you're gonna be suspended for a couple weeks. You're gonna go to the bottom of the pool, uh, so to speak. So be very careful with that. Um, so if your first suspension re request or response doesn't go through, I would immediately hire an expert, bring them in because you're gonna lose a couple weeks of sales if you don't get it right on that second response. Um, we are experts on suspensions. We deal with like one or two, one a week probably. Um, listing yanks, we deal with probably five accounts a week with listing yanks, uh, and that has easily tripled in the last 45, 60 days uh, because of COVID, because of all other problems that we've just seen and identified in, in today's podcast. So um, so if you're in any of uh, help or need of help, rather, uh, just go over to myamazonguy.com today. We can definitely help you out um, and answer any questions you might have about suspensions, listing yanks. Um, or just account protection to avoid these problems from happening to you in the future. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy, and I hope you subscribe to our podcast and tell somebody else about it to watch and follow us. We're definitely trying to get some additional followers and get the word out, and we really appreciate uh, that very much. Um, hope you guys have a good Memorial Day weekend and enjoy uh, selling on Amazon. <laughs>